Hello and thanks for watching. This video is going to serve as the video documentation for update 2.0 of the Niagara blood droplets. So there's two separate versions for 4.25 and 4.26 and there are two new particle types, both CPU and GPU. And they come with different advantages and different limitations. And this video is going to go through setting them up and what they can and what they can't do. So thanks for watching, be sure to watch till the end and look at the timestamps if you want to break this video down into smaller chunks. Thanks very much. So very quickly, I'm just going to go over the differences between 4.25 and 4.26. And I just need to make a big dis disclaimer. If you are upgrading your project from 4.25 to 4.26, you do need to reinstall these particles. Um, they will be somewhat forwards compatible, but they are completely different versions, completely not rebuilt, but completely redone um, to work appropriately in 4.25 and 4.26. There was a lot of changes um, to Niagara between these two versions. So again, if you are upgrading your project and you have this asset inside of it, please make sure you grab the latest version. So quickly, I'll show you the differences. 4.25 has CPU particles, the original particles, and it also has extra Niagara scripts. And this is to increase the collision functionality, which I'll go into later in the video. And 4.26, it includes the original and CPU, but it has less scripts. And this is because 4.26 has more functionality by default. So I didn't need to create custom scripts to get 4.26 behavior in 4.25. And there is also the GPU particles, which have no scripts and just rely on this streak emitter. And the GPU particles will only work in 4.26. They aren't backwards compatible, um, 4.26 onwards only, unfortunately, for the GPU particles. But this is just a brief overview to tell you the differences between the two versions. And yeah, use the timeline in the video to go to whatever you might need some assistance with in getting this set up. So this part of the video is just going to go over the collision filtering that I've added to the 2.0 update. And this is a very, very handy update. So in the past, the only way you could basically tell the particles not to collide was to disable uh, blocking of the world dynamic layer. And if you're doing this on one of your characters or on a door or on a movable object, chances are you're going to run into some problems when your trace channels aren't properly returning what you'd expect, um, and just, just lots of other things. It's really not ideal to have to disable your world dynamic just to get a particle system to work. So what I've gone and done is in the 4.25 version now, there will be two scratch pad scripts, one for the collision and one for the collision query. And what these do is completely rewrite the collision node for the Niagara system from scratch. So if we go in here, you can see we are using a custom module, but it is pretty much identical to the existing collision module you'll already see in the Niagara particle systems in 4.25. The difference is we have a collision channel that is now exposed. So this is done by default in 4.26, but this is not done in 4.25. So those of you still using 4.25, this is going to be a massive, massive upgrade. Now you just need to go to your user parameters in here and you can simply go to this drop down box and you can set whatever collision layer you want the blood to interact with. So by default, I've got this custom layer here. And if you want to set up custom collision layers, super easy. Go to your project settings, collision, and just add a new object channel. So by default, this is going to be set to block. I'd call this blood or blood particles, something like that. That's easy to track. So now when you go into here, you set your user parameters to test. This aortic, this aortic spurt particle is now only going to work on the test collision layer. So by default, this cube is set to block it. And as you can see, it is working perfectly, colliding as expected. Now, if this cube was, say, animated, it was a door, it was just something you don't want the particles to collide with, all you need to do now is go down to the custom collision custom collision channel that you've made and you can set it to overlap or ignore. So we'll set that to ignore and now the particles still collide with everything else but they're not going to collide with that layer. So that is the upgrade to 4.25. So quickly I'm going to show the same thing in 4.26. So this is the 4.26 version 
and as you can see there's not as many scratch pad modules and that is because in 4.26 we don't need to use a custom collision node anymore in 4.26 by default the collision trace channels are now exposed so you don't need to do anything special to get them to work so you just the same as how I showed before you can come in here set whatever collision channel um, that you want it to interact with and that's that's it so you do that for any particles you want and alright so I'm going to talk about the GPU particles now and the GPU particles are only included in 4.26 and they rely on GPU based distance field collision so while they are functional and they collide and they work and everything's all good um, you, you do have to keep in mind that there are a lot of limitations when it comes to using distance fields and those limitations unfortunately translate to the particle collision accuracy so as we can see here it looks quite good everything's working well um, the streaks the streaks aren't working in the in the preview mode they're working on this one sometimes they don't show up the best way to preview the GPU particles is to simulate it to see what it's actually going to look like in game and it does look quite good if I do say so to myself but some of the limitations now come from the fact that as soon as you start zooming out the distance field gets a lot less accurate and the collision starts to suffer for it so if we come in close now you'll see some of these particles are floating a little bit away from the surface so this isn't such a big deal depending on how free the player's camera is a lot of the time it's only you know less than a centimeter you probably won't notice it but it is a limitation so if you want to turn on distance fields even to begin with pretty easy just go to your project settings and we'll have this one under under rendering all right so if we go to rendering we can enable generate mesh distance fields inside the project now I have had some reports that if you add this to your project it might not work you might have to disable then re-enable mesh distance fields to work so if you're having any trouble with it just try turning it back off and on again um, classic advice but might save the day on this one as well so when your mesh distance fields are enabled that's when you're going to start getting this cool collision and again these particles work but they're only going to work you know at short to medium range so they're only going to be usable in some situations that's where the CPU particles are going to be picking up a lot of the weight because they're a lot more accurate and um, they're just a lot more reliable the whole way around um, but if you have the right scene set up for it you can get extremely good looking results by using the GPU particles so let's talk about how we go about getting this set up so these little errors occur whenever a new window opens or something happens in the editor and there's just a lag don't worry about it too much click play it's going to be fine so let's take a look now at our distance fields we can go down to show visualize and we can have a look at global distance field so don't get confused here we want to look at global dis distance field if we look at mesh distance fields it's going to give you the wrong idea because we can zoom all the way over here and that looks great it's like that's that's not so bad you know that should collide all right um, not really the case if we go to global distance fields and this is what the the engine is going to use to render a few things you'll notice firstly this surface over here it's quite flat um, this model has some thin geometry on it and you can see it's not rendering properly in the mesh distance fields you can come close but if you get too close or too far the collision starts to disappear so distance field collision does not work well on all mesh types you see that it works quite a bit better on the on the sphere here um, but we're still limited by the view distance as soon as we get a certain distance and if we get into like an intermediary distance like here this is where you're going to start to get collision issues so you can play around with this by changing the global distance field um, but if you set this to a volume like the default at 20,000 um, it's actually not going to help you you might think you can just turn the distance field you know up and it's just going to make everything better but as you can see it's actually hurt the quality of the meshes and even on this mesh here the fact we're right up to it we still can't see the distance fields but if we go back down to like 1500 the distance fields are much more accurate so 
again, the GPU particles, they are going to be limited. They aren't going to be very useful in long distance situations. Uh, as you can see, the distance fields, they're just, they're not accurate enough to handle the particles on something as precise as blood drops. Um, but for anything long range or long distance, that's where the CPU particles come in. If you're doing something that's shorter range, um, something where you're a little bit more up close, or if you've got gruesome melee kills and you want to get this awesome streaking effect, it's going to work very well in a small vicinity. But again, you are limited by that vicinity, and past a certain distance, the collisions will just stop, basically. Um, you're not going to add any new decals there. So as you can see, the decals only start to land on it when I come close to it. Um, which is not the case if you're using the CPU particles. The CPU particles will work fine at any distance um, and be a lot more reliable. So again, there are uses for the GPU particles. Don't get me wrong, I just want to be completely upfront and honest about the limitations of using the GPU particles because they are, a, they are not a perfect alternative and they are a lot more limited in their usability than the CPU particles. So just please keep that in mind before you purchase and thank you very much for watching.